Once I say you're fine, one second, you're just a dick. It's fine. All right. Lord, we praise you today. We thank you that you love us. We magnify and we worship you, Lord God.
a table and there's some shakers and if you feel yes. so moved, Ooh. grab them and play and let's sing out. Yeah, let's sing out too. yeah me too. Thank you. Uh oh. Very good. Wow. Oh my goodness. And this is okay, I don't know how, but
Loving God, we thank you. Yes. We worship you. Yes. And we offer ourselves up as a living sacrifice, yes. holy and pleasing unto you. Yes. And we ask that we walk out worship every single day yes. and every single way of our yes. lives. Yes. Lord, we seal this time and we, we thank you for this time with gratitude in our hearts as we gather together today, celebrating who you are, Jesus, our bridegroom, our Savior, our Lord. We praise you, give you thanks. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, John. An intentional spiritual slant to them at times. Especially when they refer to love. I don't know if it's unintentional or not. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes it's unintentional. But sometimes I think being artists, making art, but sometimes I think being artists, we have that, that soft part within us where God is talking to us. you to show me and he just sings it with all of his heart it just it really touched me and I don't know that I really cared all that much for that song when it first start, when it first came out but it's amazing how God can take something secular and bring it back to your memory when he's trying to make a point in your heart in my heart mm-hmm. yes and so uh, Lord right now I just I I just thank you Jesus we love you we yes. love you we love you, Lord. We love you. We love you. And and we are so thankful for this day and for the message that you bring. Um, I know that I will learn from it, and I know and I am praying that it touches the hearts of everyone here. All of our friends from uh, Let Go and Soar World Ministries who are watching and those who are listening on our podcast. I'm Pastor Sharon Scott. That is my last name, right? Yeah. Pastor Sharon Scott <laughs> of a Let Go and Soar Ministries, and we welcome you. So, when I dialogue with God early in the morning over coffee, usually we have coffee <laughs> together. Isn't that cool? <laughs> <laughs> Although he prefers hazelnut, and I like Irish cream. But anyway, <laughs> the most inter- interesting thoughts come to mind. It's interesting when you have your quiet time with God. Things come to mind that wouldn't normally, for me, 
and uh, that may be the same for you. I, I don't know. But uh, many times a father will ask me questions. And I'm saying, Lord, can't that wait until my second cup? You know? <laughs> but I begin uh, with these questions. I begin a, tre begin a treasure hunt to seek the answers. <laughs> Sometimes it's within his word. Most of the time it begins in his word. Sometimes it's between the lines. It's as one pastor says, it's what it didn't say that will answer those questions. What the word didn't say. Other times it's very obvious. But God loves a good game of hide and seek. <laughs> so in Proverbs 25 verse 2, I chose the Jubilee Bible for this because it just kind of illustrated my point. Your Bibles will probably say something a little bit different, but in the Jubilee Bible 2000, Proverbs 25 verse 2 says, it is the glory of God to conceal the word, but the honor of kings is to search out yes. the word. Was exactly what I was thinking of when you were saying Isn't that cool? <laughs> I love when it fits. <laughs> Proverbs what? Proverbs 25, verse 2. How does Thank the you. what does the NIV version say? Huh? Um, I'm NIV? Gonna read, I'm read it? Yeah, Walt's gonna read it. It is the glory of God to conceal a matter. To search out a matter is the glory of kings. Isn't that something? Now God led me to the Jubilee version just because it fits with this message. And Brian, so one morning God put several questions to me. And this wasn't that long ago. It was a few months the back. Gilly, the ghillie suit of the scripture. Um, God put several oh, questions to yes. me. So I have a, a New International Version, but I like the Thompson Chain reference. Mm -hmm. And um, next to that verse is... Uh, 2493, what says the secret things. Yes. yes. The secret yes. things. Yes. And that's what I'm most familiar with. Um, I, I just, uh, isn't it amazing how, that's how God's word is living in the hearts of everyone who reads it. It speaks to us, and I believe that God leads us to certain versions for certain purposes, as he did in this case. So one morning God put all these questions to me. And I'm going to just share those questions with you. You don't have to answer because we're kind of, kind of going to kind of delve into one of these specific questions. But what is grace? Now, we've had a, a message on grace. What does blessing mean? We had, uh, I, Brian, you may have been in the hospital for that one. Mm. Um, but we discussed, well, how can you possibly bless God? You know, yeah. it was a really interesting um, uh, kind of question to, to uh to kind of fill in the blanks with. And the last one is, what is the power of love? Now, I didn't exactly consult Huey Lewis, but it was fun <laughs> to listen to the song. It really was. But, yeah, I, I, I wrote these all down in one day. All of these questions came in one day, and I just went, whoa, okay, where do I start? I really enjoyed... The way Huey Lewis brought out that it can have different effects on different people. Exactly. That's, mm -hmm. That was powerful. And the reason that I brought that here, uh, the reason we played that is because of that. And we're going to delve into that a little bit further as we go along. Well, I brought into our midweek group the first two, as I was saying, the blessings and grace. Um, today we're going to talk about what is the power of love. Now, most of us jump to what we know to be the truth regarding the answer of this question. And everyone, because we are all individuals, we will interpret things differently according to many different factors, which is a whole different sermon in itself. <laughs> so, I settled in comfortably to the knowledge that love can move mountains. Yeah. We, we even have that in some of our lyrics, right? Uh, it can heal, and so forth and so on. Amen? Amen. We all know that. We, we love Jesus, and we've seen him do these things. And we are called to do these things, right? So, of course, God is not allowing me to operate in my comfort zone. <laughs> oh, boy, how many of us realize that if we only operate from our comfort zone, 
we will stay in the same skin until we shrink and shrink and shrink down to nothing. Mm. Okay, we will never stretch and grow if we remain in our comfort zone. I, at least that's what Holy Spirit said, and I went, oh, okay. <sighs> and then I went, I'm ready. I wrote down over the course of several weeks what God seemed to be giving to me or uh, were random thoughts to me on the subject, praying that Father God would connect the dots for me. I'm big on connecting dots. I even like the little books, you know. A, B, C. At least I was hoping that God would help me to do that. So I can honestly say that we are here on the morning of our meeting, and I'm typing this up. Now, I'm just reading to you what I wrote this morning. I'm typing this up now, just praying that that's what happens. I could not type this message until this morning, about three hours ago. That can be very unsettling when you know that you're up here. Almost as unsettling as getting here going, oh no, where's my Bible? My mm -hmm. Bible had my message in it. I left it at home. You know, I know pastors who have experienced things like that, but out of that comes the most wonderful, rich message sometimes that they've ever given. Mm -hmm. So, I rely totally and trust completely that Holy Spirit will guide me on this journey of discovery with you all. We all know that God is love. So in processing all of these random thoughts, I began there. That was my starting point, the knowledge that God is love. Where does it say God is love in Scripture? 1 John. 1 John. 2 Timothy. Four. Yeah. Chapter oh, 4. 1 John. Two places. 1 John. Two places. We have John 4, <clears throat> verse 8. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. I'm going to read that again, and, and, and hold on to this. Keep it in your, your brain for a little bit throughout this message. John 4, 8 says, Whoever does not love God does not know God, because God is love. No, 1 John 4? 1 John 4. It is, okay, that, I told you I typed it this morning. I mean, <laughs> I forgot. 1 John 4, 8. Forgive me, Thank I'm you. sorry. Thank you, Terry Sue. No worries. <laughs> I appreciate that. So, therefore, if we are to understand the power of love, we need to understand who and what God is. Oh, well, we know that. Well, let's just take a little refresher course, okay? To do that, I'd like to refer to Psalm 103, verses 1 through 14. Mm. I read this frequently. I do. I, I just find the need to bury myself and soak in Psalm 103, verses 1 through 14. <clears throat> I like to refer to these when speaking of the characteristics of God. And I'm thinking that probably makes sense to everybody here today. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul, all my inmost being. Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion. Wow. He crowns us with love and compassion. Compassion. Who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. Does not say some. It says all. I want to encourage you, whenever you see the word all in scripture, pay attention. Pay attention. He made known his ways to Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and gracious. As Graham Cook says, slow <laughs> to anger. <laughs> I'm so glad. <clears throat> Abounding in love. He will not always accuse. Wow, I'm so glad. Nor will he harbor his anger forever. Oh boy, am I glad. He does not treat us as our sins deserve. Thank you. Or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, 
So great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west. Some of us are pulling up song lyrics as I'm reading this. Yes, there's a song for that. Yes. Uh, as far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. He doesn't just cover them up. He removes them. That's right. Oh, whoa, hallelujah. Yeah. As the Father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. Wow. How incredibly powerful. <clears throat> so what do we see here as the characteristics of God? If we run through that again, and, and uh, you can use your finger and just kind of jot down through there, the characteristics of God, he's forgiver, mm -hmm. he's healer, redeemer, lover, compassionate, gift giver, renewer, he is righteous, he is just, he is compassionate, he is compassionate, he is compassionate, and I say that because it says it four times. Go back and look. Mm -hmm. I think maybe God's trying to get us to understand mm -hmm. that he's compassionate, right? Yeah. Depending on which version, mine is the NIV, you may notice that God is overwhelmingly compassionate. Thank you, Lord. It is mentioned four times. All of these show the fundamental makeup of God. So these are the characteristics of God. That is who he is. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> now, track with me here because this will be a bit of a stretch for you. It might even make you squirm. It was, for me, anyway, uh, a little bit of a stretch. I found myself going, really, God? Really? Okay. <laughs> if God is love, how is it possible for us to love him? That's the next treasure hunt we're going to go on. Sounds interesting. Certainly mankind is not love. Amen? Amen. Ooh. Yeah. The who of love is God. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. The who of love is God. The what of love is, and I put a question mark after this actually, the what of God, excuse me, the what of love is action, and here's why I put a question mark after that. Let's look at what many people call the love chapter, 1 Corinthians 13, mm. verses 1 through 8a. Now, who would like to read this? I know you don't want to hear me babble around about this. 1 through 8? <laughs> what? Yes. yes. Okay. We're there. Yay. Okay, go ahead there. Okay. 1 through 8, right? 8a. One through eight, a just the first part. Chapter and verse. Okay. Yes. First Corinthians. First Corinthians thirteen, Sorry. chapter thirteen, verses one through eight, a. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am only a resounding gong or a changing, clanging cymbal. Rather, if I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains. But have not love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. Love never fails. So we just finished reading, reading 1 Corinthians 13, verses 1 through 8a. Love never fails. Now, let's try something. Let's go back and read that again. And I will do it for the... Jill, are you... Can you... Would you mind reading that again? But this time, we're going to substitute God. For the word love. 
I like this um, at the end of chapter 12. The very end of chapter 12 is key. It says, and now I will show you the most excellent way. Yes. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not God, I am nothing, right? I'm only a resounding gong or clanging cymbal. And if I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but have not God, because God is love, God, I am nothing. And if I possess, if I give all my possessions to the poor and surrender my body to the flames, but I have not God, I gain nothing. God is patient. God is kind. God does not envy, does not boast, is not proud, is not rude, is not self-seeking, is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. God does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. God never fails. Yeah. The challenge that I had with that is that these... these uh, I believe that this means that these are actions of love and not love itself. Not God, but what God does in this chapter. Before we read about the characteristics of God, okay, this is a chapter where I I'm looking at it maybe just for the purposes of what we're learning today as actions of love. So see where we're stretching things a little bit. We're thinking, hmm, I don't know. Well, well I think that was the writer's point, too. Yes. Was you can do all those things without love. Exactly. And you it's can. useless. You can. <laughs> so, yeah, it kind of made my head hurt. In my mind, this chapter tells us what love does and does not do. Remember, it says, in Pastor Walt's latest book, which is titled, We Can Love, he explains the four types of love, eros, philia, storge, and agape. Let's talk about these. I believe the first love, not fond of using air quotes, I'm sorry, but you can't see what I'm looking at. Uh, the first love, eros, to be translated into modern language that we use today as lust. Bear with me. <clears throat> Let's not be mistaken. It's perfectly acceptable for a husband to lust after his wife <laughs> and vice versa. That's wonderful. You know, it's, you know. But can we all agree that mankind has perverted and twisted and changed God's original intention for this love? Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely good. Good crowd. <laughs> we use it to describe our desires for candy, for music, for cars, just about anything. And, and we've heard lots of sermons and messages on that. You know, it's like, oh, another message on love. I know, don't use it so fleetingly. <laughs> But we need to hear these things. We do. But we don't just, we, we don't substitute the word love for the word lust when we're talking about these things. We say love, correct? And then there is the love mentioned in songs. I want to know what love is. But there are many, many songs which love is not really what they're talking about at all. Um, I'm not even going to mention some of the titles of them. You'll, you would know what they were. You just know. You listen to this going, wait, whoa. Hmm. <laughs> okay, the love we see on television and at the movies, which is certainly not love, is another one, correct? This pervasive twisting of the original intent God had for this type of love has been the cause of abortion, rape, crimes, war, and many other very evil things in our society today. 
And not just today. I mean, this has been going on since the fall. Right? Rape and abortion are not new. I'm sorry to say. They're not. And guess what? The enemy is having a blast with it. Yes. With Eros. And we are allowing it. We, as a collective society of Christians, of, of the army of Christ, we're letting it, we are letting it happen. Mm -hmm. We're not even going to get into the discussion of, well, I'm just one person. That mm -hmm. That's just, sorry. So it was Jesus. Yeah. Well, and, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's all, bottom line, all of that is for the sake of sex. That's the first type of love that we're going to discuss. And that's philia is brotherly love, or philia. Some people pronounce it philia. Is, is brotherly love, friendship, shared goodwill. We say, I love my sister in Christ. Perfectly acceptable. And actually, we encourage that, don't we? I love Judy. She knows that. I love Suki. And, and I, I love all of you. Where the with, city Philadelphia came from. Exactly. Yeah. City of brotherly love. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So that kind of love is encouraged within the body and, and actually in the world. We want that. Storge, a relatively new term to me, and I think I'm pronouncing it correctly. We did a little research and it's probably pronounced here one way and here another, but it's, it describes familial love, the love of a big brother for his sister. Don't you talk to my sister like that, you know. <laughs> Nobody puts but, on her but me. That's right. <laughs> so, or, or for a daughter, a, a, a father for his daughter. So you want to date my daughter, huh? You know. <laughs> Familial love, a parent and child, child and parent, cousins, grandparents, etc. It's certainly unique and it has a wonderful purpose, which I see to be the protection of God's creation. Which is family. Amen? Amen? So, with the increase of divorce, this philia or philia, or excuse me, storge love is actually quite rare mm -hmm. in comparison to centuries ago. How sad is that? Well, and it's, it's tragic. sadly corrupted too. That's, yes. that's what is the bonding effect in many gangs cultures and things like that. Oh, yes, that because we still seek it. Mm -hmm. right. We still seek it. Uh, with the increase of divorce, it's actually quite rare, and the relationships which were once close-knit are no longer. And I can, I can tell you about that within my own family, surprisingly. Um, we, I came from a broken family. My children came from a broken family. What defines family anymore is not even close to God's original definition. His creation of family. Mm -hmm. So, I personally have seen a change in this in my own life. Just briefly, within the last year, family members are starting to find each other. And there's my 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 niece. Her name is Cindy, who is my my natural brother. Okay, to explain that, I have to tell you, I have. Three stepbrothers, two half brothers, one natural brother, and one natural sister. Okay. My original brother, he had a daughter named Cindy. And I kind of remembered her. And one day I was on Facebook on the World Ministry page, and I see this bing, Auntie, is this you? Facebook and social media can be a wonderful tool. Yes, it can. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've through that through through it. I have been reunited and reconciled with my own sister. I have reestablished a connection with my brother, my cousin who just passed away and is with Jesus now. We were able to briefly just say, oh, hey, hi, how are you? I love you. Love, love, that power of extending that love, even though it's just a word typed out. I can see his face and his picture, and I got to tell him that I love him. And then one day, on the very same day that Brother O2 died, mm. my cousin Michael died. I didn't know that until a couple of days later. What? Oh, whoa. But people are reaching out. The Lord is busy working within his people. And people are reaching out within mm. fractured families. And they're saying, let's reconnect. 
I'm just covered in, in ugh, goosebumps right now. I just, ah, yes. That is the power of love. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, we want to find our grandson. Yes. We have, all of us have, I'm assuming, have people within our family where we're going, I wonder what ever happened to that person. Yeah. Wow. Well, mm-hmm. now we have more of a chance of reaching out and actually finding and reconnecting. But bottom line is a choice. It's up to us. It's up to them. I have a brother who I would venture to say, well, no, I'm not going to speak that. I'm going to speak life into the fact that I have a God who loves families, and my brother, my half-brother, who lives in Germany, is going to reach out to me, and he's going to say, let's reconcile. I love you. That's what I'm speaking life into. So, then, the last one on our list of four. So we've had Eros. What's the second one we had? Thalia. The third one? Okay. Sturge or Storge? Sounds like Sturgeon. It does. (laughs) Fishers of men. (laughs) Oh, she's so good. So, (laughs) lastly, but not the least important, of course, is agape. Some people pronounce it agape. But either way, it's A-G-A-P-E. And we know this to be the incredibly beautiful, and some think unattainable, unconditional love of God. That discussion is for another message, whether or not it's unattainable. (laughs) Okay. But Walt's book does cover all of these beautifully, and I shamelessly, shamelessly encourage you to grab a copy of it this summer when it is available. Hopefully before this summer we will have it published. All right. But he does go into great detail to each one of these, talking about whether or not they're truly unattainable. That's a lie of the enemy. Can we just laugh at that? (laughs) (laughs) Just make Pastor Steve proud. Ha, 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 ha. So so when did love get so complicated? I want you to know today I looked it up, the types of love on the Internet, and there were actually three more. Okay. Psychologists have developed three more types of love. Aren't you happy? <laughs> you know, was it always God's plan to have many different kinds of love? It's another treasure hunt for you. I know we will automatically say no. But think about it before you automatically shake your head. <laughs> Maybe it was. Maybe not. So... I don't really think so. I get to do that because I wrote this. (laughs) But firstly, I don't think eros is actually love. That's the the root of the word erotic. I don't believe it is actually love. It's more of a natural instinct. Good way to put it. Good way to put it. For procreation. And yes. I believe that it is the same, or excuse me, I believe that that is the name mankind put to it, put on it to justify it outside of marriage. Mm -hmm. But we don't want to dwell on that. It's just my, and by the way, John MacArthur's opinion. I believe that mankind developed eros, eros, however you want to pronounce it, as a way of justifying lust outside of marriage. That's just food for thought. You go on your own treasure hunt. So to recap, the who of love is God, correct? Mm -hmm. The what of love is action, to bless, to show affection, to provide for the needs of others, to honor, to respect, amen? So we, as born-again Christians, so good to be able to say this, Mm -hmm. we are the home of God. Yes. God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit resides in us. Hallelujah. So here's another rather provocative question. Is it possible, now again, before you go, or I want you to pause for a moment and allow me please just to not be dizzy anymore. (laughs) So... Is it possible to love without being a Christian? She's going, oh, did she really say that? Now, what about according to God's definition of love? Okay, now, 1 John 4.16 says, 
First John 4.16. First John 4.16. Okay, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> okay, um, First John chapter 4, verse 16 through the New King James Version, which is my favorite, personally. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, yes. because fear involves torment, but he who fears has not been made perfect in love. Hmm. That's 418. That's, okay, 416. Oh, it is, 416. But you know what? I like it. <laughs> well, okay. Now that we've cast out fear with love, Amen. Right? <laughs> verse 16 says, And we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love. And he who abides in love abides in God and God in him. Interesting. Thank you, Terry Sue. Lovely. So we like to have fun. Okay. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in him. Mm -hmm. Now we understand the part where we say God lives in us. I think we have a pretty good understanding about that. Mm -hmm. But I think sometimes we have a little bit of a struggle thinking I'm in God okay well mm -hmm. he's everywhere can we so we're in that everywhere can that, we get into some a little more lengthy detail on that not yet okay <laughs> that's your prophetic side showing there cover it up so we're <laughs> <laughs> just like temporarily <laughs> So, certainly, you know, when we say whoever li lives in love lives in God and God in him. Okay, that's what we just read. We're just kind of going back to where we were. Okay, it can't, certainly, it can't be that simple. Okay, there is a process. I believe what is being said here is that God is love. To live in God lives in who God is, the person of God, and God lives in him. Let's, let's go there one more time because it, it's a little bit convoluted. So, to live in God, we say, whoever lives in love lives in God. So we're substituting the word God, or God, God's name, for the word love here. So, whoever lives in God, God lives in him. Mm -hmm. Okay? But what they're saying, what I believe the Holy Spirit is saying is, in order to do that, you have to be, in a, you have to have love. Okay? Does that make sense? Yeah, it's like, to me, it's like a person that's made of 70% water taking a swim. You're in the water, and the water is in you. Mm -hmm. Very good. So it's like God is everywhere. He's the atmosphere we breathe. So, of course, we're in God. You know, a little segue, a little rabbit trail. I get to do that because I have the microphone. Um, we, we, now I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> what, <coughs> tell me again what you just said, Terry. Well, I said uh, living in God's love is kind of like, because we're made of 70% water on the inside, and when we go dip in the lake or whatever, we're in water, so... Water is in us, and we're in water. Okay. So God is everywhere. He's in our atmosphere. That's right. We're breathing him in. And, and that is exactly a, the greatest segue to what I was going to say. One day it occurred to me, and this is, like I said, a little rabbit trail, that the air we breathe and the rain that's being circulated and the drops of water that are hitting the earth and that are being evaporated and going back... Those are the very same ones that Jesus breathed, drank, and was saturated by, and maybe bathed in. It's the same thing. Isn't that astounding? Yes, Jill? You know, you're talking about God being in us, and we're in God. You know, Jesus prayed a prayer uh, in the John 17. Uh, Jesus prays for all the believers, and starting... In, with verse 20, he says, My prayer is not for them alone, but I pray also for those who believe in me through their message that all of them may be one. 
That's right. Father, just as you and I are one, and I am in you, may they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. And it, it's really rich. It goes all the way down. And uh, I'll stop at 23, but it says here, I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one, and I in them and you in me, and may we be brought to complete unity. That's right. That's uh, right. To let the world know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Mm -hmm. And Reverend Cheryl Comer just read the scripture that is the basis of our ministry, bringing unity within the body of Christ. It's, it, it speaks for itself. I, I just I can't add anything more to that. You're not supposed to anyway. All right, so Did you? here's another interesting question on my, in the treasure hunt that God put me on. Do you consider love to be an emotion or a feeling? Or do you believe it to be a choice with a series of actions attached to it? Mm. What do you think? Real briefly, because it's already 2 o'clock. <laughs> I think it's a choice that results in a feeling. Choice that results in a feeling. That's kind of where you were going the other day. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I think love requires action. Love requires action. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Is it a feeling, an emotion? Always. Brian's shaking his head. <laughs> no. No. Okay. Not always. Most of us are in agreement here. Um, so let, let's, go, let's go on a little bit. Better put, when we love someone, is it a feeling, an action, or a choice, or all, or a combination of some of those, or does it vary? I personally believe that it varies, yeah. and I'll yeah. explain why. My mother and I had a very strained relationship. I didn't feel love for her. I acted in love. Another, I, I, I should better say I acted out of love when I um, interacted with her at certain times. Um, maybe out of a sense of obligation, I don't really want to overanalyze it. But that's a situation where I can honestly say, and I have had this discussion with a pastor, I don't know if I really loved my own mother. I certainly never loved my father, and for reasons why we will never get into, I mean, we don't have time to get into. But the point is, can you act lovingly without actually loving? Oh, yeah. yeah. So we're all in agreement with that. That's good. So if it's a feeling, it's exclusive to you. Another person can also feel love, but that's also exclusive to them. Okay. In other words, they're not really feeling what you feel because you are a separate person. Okay. Because no two people feel exactly the same way. So if it's an action... It's something that you share with someone. If I'm going to act in love, I'm doing something for you. It involves two people, so you're sharing that with another person. If it's a choice, then is it void of feeling? Has feelings, have feelings been put out of the equation? Sometimes maybe, but not always. So those are your treasure hunts. So as, a new cre as, as new creations in Christ, God is within us. We know we've said that many times. If we act in and carry and live with the same characteristics as God, are we like God? In some ways, yeah. In some ways. We were created in his image. We have that DNA. We have those characteristics. <clears throat> so they're not, there's some, some people that are buried pretty far down, but in other ones, they're right out there. And here is a real good il illustration of why God says, when you're married, the two shall be one. Yeah. We are made in his likeness, but do we act like it? Well, just finished saying that, but in a different way. Mm -hmm. Exactly the same thing. So, having reviewed all these things, when we love someone, are we using the power of God? Because God is love. 
are we always using the power of God when we love someone? Depends on what your Not always. And what your relationship is with God. That's right. And with the other person. And, yeah. God is love. Amen. God is our creator, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Jesus tells us to love one another. Yeah. What exactly does he mean? As I have loved you, he said. I don't believe he's only referring to the actions which stemmed from who he is. I believe he is referring to the who of love. To love from our core with the heart of Jesus is certainly different from our actions out of duty of love. So if I had the normal God meant, God intended love for my mother... I would have been acting out of the love of Christ. And I didn't. Mm. Yes, I've repented. Yes, I've received forgiveness. God is so good. God is so good. So, remember 1 Corinthians 13, 1 says, If I speak in tongues of men or angels but do not have love, I am only a resounding <coughs> gong or a clanging cymbal. <coughs> It's, uh, we call, used to call it lip service, you know. <clears throat> in other words, I feel this means that if our actions do not have God resident in them, they are not love, and they're therefore useless in the kingdom. Well, you know, that goes to debate, but we are definitely called to emulate Jesus in all that we think and say and do. What good does it do if we do not have him within us? We are like the man who tried to pay to have the power of Jesus and or the disciples, even if his or our intentions were good. Do you recall that? Simon. Uh, it's Simon. Yeah, I didn't pull it up because for, for time's sake. But his intentions, I believe, were good. But that was just such a... I don't want to use that word to describe it. It, it, was, it was warped. It was a real warped way of, of going about it. So we can act lovingly. We can be in love. Interesting. We can love someone. These things are why Jesus was scourged and died on the cross. Jesus acted lovingly when he allowed, a man, when he allowed mankind to torture him, ripping his flesh while he was tied to a pillar. You know as well as I do, all he had to do was think it and boom. He didn't have to do it. He didn't have to do it, but he chose it because he's so in love with you, personally. He's so in love with you. You are literally to die for, to put it in, in the vernacular. He loves you with the love of God because he is God. But how are these things God? Our hearts must be conditioned by the Holy Spirit to reflect the compassion of God. Now, if you were brought up in a family situation like mine or like a lot of us have to given testimony to, loving unconditionally or with compassion is not something we do naturally. It's something that I had to learn. And the only way I learned it was through the love of Christ when I received him as Savior. What can love do? The answer is simple, but not really. Love can do all that God can do. Let that sink in. Everything that God can do, love can do. Because love is God. God is love, right? So, what can man's love do? Dun, dun, dun. It's certainly capable of doing mm -hmm. all that the enemy can do. Mm -hmm. Think about that. Without Christ, our love has no power of God. To sum up my own opinion, mankind has changed the definition of love to suit his own needs, dividing it into categories according to what type of action is desired. God's love is the same yesterday, today, and forever because God is love. And God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. Yes. We can love according to the depth of man. But our love cannot know the depth of God's original intention until we receive him totally and completely. A great illustration of this is Cain and Abel. 
What happened? In the story of Cain and Abel. Cain gave you more excellent gift. <coughs> Abel. Or Abel. I'm just, yeah. Excuse me. Yeah, Abel gave the more Cain excellent gift. Uh, ultimately, though, how did the story end? With Cain murdering him. Right. Death. Cain Death. was exiled to the Isle of Nod. That's right. Of Nod. I know, that just sounds so musical. It's you know, like, it's where, not, not musical. <laughs> but where is the I don't know. Nod? Yeah. That's your treasure. See, now you know your next treasure hunt, Jill. Where is the land of Nod? <laughs> I have always thought of it as Nod being like unconsciousness. Yeah, yeah, because we nod off. Right. When mm -hmm. messages go too long. Yeah. <laughs> so, that, that death would never have happened if sin had not entered into the equation. Death wouldn't exist. Think about it. Death would not exist. We know this, but I think we t have a tendency to go numb sometimes. Yeah. What do they call it um, when when you can't desensitize? Uh, nose blind, we become desensitized. So they were brothers who loved each other. Air quotes. They lo they, they were brothers. They had what kind of love? Brotherly love. Familiar. 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 Story. Story. Sturgeon. 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 <laughs> <laughs> like a sturgeon. But they did love each other, according to that, but death did enter in. Without God, the power of love to heal, save, deliver, move mountains, protect, mend, reconcile, and many other things, I feel, would not exist. Without God, yeah. it would not exist. Certainly we wouldn't, but... Or they're extremely temporary. Yes. Very fickle. The power of love is the power of God. So next time you, as a creation in Christ... Say you love someone or something. Think about it before you open your mouth and utter those words. What are you really saying? I love chocolate, especially when it has caramel in it. I love it. What is the power behind those words? And how do you... You... you I was going to say diminutize. I made a new word. You, you reduce the, the power when you use it like that. Your words have power. Think, think before you utter them. With them, conjoined with the power of God, love, we can do all things that Jesus gave us to do in Matthew 28, 16 through 20, which we know as the Great Commission. And in Mark 16, 15 through 18, he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, this is Jesus speaking, they will drive out demons, they will speak in new tongues, they will pick up snakes with their hands, and when they drink deadly poison, it will not hurt them at all. They will place their hands on sick people, and they just might maybe, possibly, get well. That's not what he said. He said they will get well. How many of you really believe? Me. How many of you have experienced that where you've laid Me. hands on someone and you have seen them healed? We know. We know. We know the power of God. Because, dear brothers and sisters, when you lay your hands on someone and you pray healing, when you, even if it's on the internet, as Reverend Jill and I were talking about earlier, yeah. even when it's on the internet, on Messenger, and somebody says, oh, like in, in my case, a woman said she had a lump in her neck and they were thinking it was the C word. And I said, no, it's not. I got a word of knowledge. I said, no, it's not. No, it's not. Don't even allow that in. And I began to speak out. And actually, I recorded my own voice praying against that. I said, I rebuke it. I stand against it. I speak to that, you know, and so forth and so on, like we all have done. And I'd say an hour and a half later, I get this little voice message, and I played it, and she lives in Texas, so she sounds like this. I, love you. I know you're listening. I love you. She says, OMG, I love you. I love you. I love you, sister. I love you. Thank you, Jesus. The lump is gone. Yay. Uh, That's a good Texas accent. Hallelujah. So my point is this. 
the enemy does not stand a chance. And he's so frustrated. <laughs> Don't give him that chance. That is the power of love. Where God is, there is true love. God is within you. And the power of God's love is within you. So let's pray. Father God, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We love you. We love you. We love you, as my friend would say, my dear sister. We truly do, Lord. We thank you that you give us this chance to receive you, the opportunity to receive you and to walk in you and you in us, in the power of love. We thank you, Lord, that we don't have to go searching for it because it's right here, right now, in this place, multiplied because of you. We thank you, Lord, and we ask your blessing upon all who are listening, all who are watching. And before I finish my prayer, for all of you who are listening and watching, if you've not yet received Christ as Savior, and you want that power that we are speaking of, because it is God, just ask him into your heart. Tell him you, you want what it is that Christians carry, the ability to love unconditionally. Tell him that you believe that he died on the cross for your sins. Tell him that you want him as your savior and ask him into your heart. And then go and find brothers and sisters in Christ. Tell them what you have done. Because we believe today that if you do this, you are now born again in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you for Thank my, very you. much for watching and listening. Mm -hmm. And may God bless you all. Yes. Amen, Amen. Lord. Amen. Amen.